and welcome to the Business of Property podcast. I'm Stuart. And I'm Simon. And we've been finding, buying and creating income from investment properties for 20 years and we talk every week about the reality of running our property businesses. Now, quick point, please do leave a rating if you're listening on your podcast player and uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, as you can now, please do subscribe to the channel. We know a number of you already have, so we're very pleased and proud of that. Thank you very much. Today's topic started with the fact that we created a little questionnaire and we will pop the link of that questionnaire into uh, the show notes and the comment section uh, on YouTube. And the the questionnaire itself is, are you ready to scale your property business? Are you ready in the sense of, you know, do you have the strategy? Do you have the software and systems in place? And do you have the necessary support required that you're going to need to scale a property business to a significant degree? Now, and it's an important caveat to say that when we talk about scaling, not everybody wants to do that. But this this questionnaire will let you know if it's something you're interested in. And when we talk about scaling, or certainly when I talk about scaling, I'm thinking of creating six figure revenue because that's what I've done in my business. But whilst setting it up, I needed a, a willing test candidate to do some, you know, what we technically call user acceptance testing. So I flicked the link over to my colleague and partner, Mr. Pitha, to complete the said questionnaire. And it grades you on how you fare in terms of strategy, how you fare in terms of systems and software and how you fare in terms of support now i don't want to give the game away simon but i had some feelings about where you'd come out on this given that you are the founder creator coder extraordinaire that's built websites and very clever technology so i had some sense of where you were going to score highly and maybe not so highly but maybe you'd like to share with the group how it went no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, I, I'm just going to pick up on, on the fact that you suggested I was willing in, in this uh, scenario. Uh, and no, no, I, I don't think I was particularly. And I, I generally am not super keen on filling in in surveys, especially seeing as the, the, I, 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 I mean, this is entirely a problem with me. Not not the surveys I think that that people put out there and and they're, they're intended to be genuinely helpful and and provide guidance and and especially this one there's some of the uh, the suggestions and strategy help and things that you've you put into this Stuart are, are, are fantastic and I, I just always find in these surveys that the the question and the potential answers and things are just never quite what I'm looking for I, I always feel I, I just fit in some little niche somewhere else. So, so with that proviso, um, I, I think that that was why my scores were um, less than one might have hoped. And because, because obviously the, the, the question just wasn't geared to my particular scenario and my particular situation. For example, there was no question in there saying, have you spent the last five to 10 years of your life writing a software product that's entirely designed to help streamline and automate the managing of property. And, and of course, if that had been in there, I would have scored brilliantly, but, but it wasn't there. So, so uh, clearly a problem with the survey. I, I, I <laughs> um, and what, are you wanting me to actually reveal the results though? <laughs> yes, I think so. I think, you know, so we, we're scoring out of a hundred percent, but you know, le, le, the reveal is that Simon, probably scored he scored above 50 percent so obviously 100 percent being the highest but he's got above 50 percent on software and systems which we would hope but it, it was a score of 64 percent. now a quick aside i might acknowledge that maybe there was a question in there that scored him a little lower and was slightly unfair in this occasion however he still scored lowly which means we get the opportunity to to smile point and laugh that's that's just cruel <laughs> I mean, to, to go over them, so the, you, the, the scoring is split into three categories, strategy, systems and software, and support. And just quickly, my, as, as you mentioned already, my systems and software score was 64%, strategy was 52%, and support was a, was a slightly measly 38%. Ooh. But, um, but 
but I, I, I'm not overly surprised about about that one because my my sort of strategy for my um, property portfolio business is is a sort of very slow and steady um, strategy, and I, I do have I do have goals, I do have objectives and financial targets that I would like to meet in the long term, but especially at the moment, given the current economic situation and, and property market and mortgage market, um, I, I have sort of paused some of my, maybe most of my uh, actions in that particular business. And, and hence, I'm not actively talking to people about it. I'm not actively seeking support around it, for example. So that I'm not surprised that that one's a bit lower. And also, I think that probably affected my strategy score as well, because, again, I'm not actively sort of driving towards a, a target at the moment because because i i know that the situation just doesn't really uh, allow for that so in the future the, the sort of gas pedal will be going back down in that business but right now it's easing off a little bit to allow for the, the sort of current current market situation yes um, yes as for my systems and software score i i I bow my head in shame. I, I don't don't quite know what happened there. <laughs> yeah. Well, as we've said, uh, it, it was all in fun. But more importantly, if you're listening to this, head down into the show notes or the comments, click on that button and see where you score. And uh, it might give you some insight if if you are looking. And, and as we've stated, you know, Simon isn't necessarily at the right stage to be thinking about that. So might score lowly. But anyway, get get down there, have a look yourselves and see how you score. Indeed, indeed. It's uh, it's good fun, uh, assuming you, you can cope with not finding the exact niche that probably fits your, your particular scenario. There are lots of really good questions and they they, they will expose some thoughts and ideas, um, especially in the sort of results you get at the end of it. So while I'm not really driving that hard with my property business at the moment, you, Stuart, are, are much more driving yours and trying to push that forward and and grow that but not just grow the, the sort of headline income one of the things you're focusing on at the moment is trying to grow your profitability within that business and hence you've recently had a, a very focused idea on trying to drive down your your costs in that business yeah that's However, right <laughs> you have also just taken on a member of staff now yes. why would you do that yeah it sounds counterintuitive doesn't it it sounds it sounds like i don't know what i'm doing um so why have i taken on a cost when i'm looking to reduce cost well when i did my own scorecard i actually scored quite highly in strategy which i was very pleased about because i think about it all the time i think about what the plan is where we're going and I monitor things a lot and I don't I don't want to start flogging a dead horse here but just as a reminder you know that's why this question is important if you are looking to to scale because you really need to be thinking about certain things and those things relate to strategy vision and where you want to get to and for me uh, having grown a, a multi six figure rental income business I now realize I can create the revenue and create the turnover. And as we've said many times, turnover is vanity. So, you know, you know the business may be, you know, approaching, you know, multiples of six figure income, but the profit just isn't where it needs to be. So I look at these numbers at least monthly and I look at costs such as repairs and maintenance, energy costs, obviously mortgages, and anything else that's related to the business. And the biggest ones that I can control, as many people would imagine, are around mortgage interest. But that's really kind of like a few activities a year or every couple of years, depending on how long those mortgage fixed rates are for. The other cost is energy. The, the, the other biggest costs in the business are cost of energy, gas, electric, water, etc. And given that, so we have 100 rooms almost in HMOs, uh, these are all bills included properties. So that is a cost that sits inside of my company. 
and the other costs are repairs and maintenance. So energy and repairs and maintenance. Now, as one person, so I consider my team across the businesses that I work with. So letting agents, I have direct contact with builders, electricians, plumbers, uh, and so on. However, as one person, what I can't do is monitor what comes in and comes out. So where I'm at is that I am very reactive. So I tend to look at the costs once they've happened. So this is the long way around to getting to my rationale for employing someone for four half days a week is that this person can actually get in front of and triage the costs that are coming through. So for probably what I would charge myself out at per day, I can employ this person for a month. And this person is now liaising directly with tenants, letting agents, uh, builders, plumbers and electricians. And when the maintenance request comes in, and we still have a lot of work to do in terms of working this through, which which we're going to do with Patma, by the way, because I think uh, that, you know the tenant software is very, very good. But what this person is going to be able to do, and is already doing actually within the space of a few weeks, is coming to me and saying, we've got maintenance issue X, and I've now got three costs on the table. Which should we which should we go with? And 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 as you know, you know there's a there's an equation which is how important is it, i.e., how quickly does it need to be done versus the cost itself. So what this person is essentially employed to do is now, and I believe that I will save the cost of this person within the space of a month or two months just by having a handle on and selecting how I do the maintenance that we do. So it's all about being better prepared and planning what's happening rather than things happening to you or to your business. Yeah. So it's it's all really part of creating the systems in your business so that you are not subject to other things happening to you, but so that you have proactive systems and procedures, processes that that you know your business is going to follow and, and to check what's going to happen before it does happen. So have you have you started sort of writing procedures and processes for this this person to follow or are they are they creating them as they go along or did, did you have them already in advance because i mean if in my own property business it's obviously much much smaller and much simpler being only only by to lets but i do have processes that i follow every month every few months what have you to to perform the various required tasks but I have not documented those. Mm. They, they are not written anywhere for, for anyone else to pick up. They, they're all in my head. So how, how does that fit in your business at the moment? Well, it's something I did a few years ago, actually. I did a, 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 did a lot of writing. And it's it, for me personally, it's probably the least exciting thing I could think of. If you were going to send me to a place that was described as hell on earth, send me to a place where I had to write down each action within a process, you know, we've all done it. We did, you know, whether you're at school, at college, where you had to write the processes down for making a cup of tea. And then you suddenly realize, oh, there's a lot of processes making a cup of tea and it's really bloody boring. I can just make a cup of tea. But I did it a few years ago because I knew it was going to be important if I wanted to grow. And funny on the, on the questionnaire that we've got, depending on your grading, one of the responses is if you haven't documented the system or the process, you are the system or the process. And that being so, you're always going to be the limitation within that business. So uh, a few years ago, and, and, and we haven't done all of them by any stretch, but a lot of the important ones around occupancy and maintenance have created um, and written you know, standard operating procedures or SA, SOPs, as, as they call them in business. So I had written a number of those. So this person does have a lot to work with, but also has carte blanche to create new ones. And, you know, the, the brief is, if this doesn't work, change it. You know, I don't want to, you know, I certainly didn't want. And, and the other thing is, for, for any of us that have come from corporate backgrounds, I'm sure, pretty sure we always hated it when the computer said no, which is that is not, you know, or when someone says, no, that's not how we do this. Well, that's fine. If what you're doing is the most efficient and best way to do it. But if someone says, well, I think we could do it this way, and it's a better, more efficient 
more cost effective and, and better for our customers, then why wouldn't we just do that? And so I've always made sure I've made sure to brief that and say, look, this is the process because this is what I documented two, three years ago. But if you think there's a better way because you're in at the coal phase or the world's changed, do that, document it, highlight it. And that just means that should this person, and I hope they don't, but should the person move on, next person that comes in will just pick up from from where that person left. Left. So, so to answer the question, I'd done it a few years ago um, to a varying degree on lots of important things, but there's still a lot more to do as we as we learn and and hopefully grow further. But the, but ultimately, the reason I weighed out this person in my head was there's other ways where we could have actually set objectives related to cost reduction. So, and that is something we could do as we scale even further, which is to say, okay, if we, if we can bring energy costs down by another ten percent. You know, we'll set bonus or targets for for person or for the business, you know, to bring those costs down further because they've jumped so high. Is this person having any um, direct uh, contact with tenants, or are they are they dealing with things that are coming in from, from letting agents, or how is how is that sort of how is their interface to the rest of the business? I think is what I'm trying to ask. At the moment, because of what we do is ninety nine percent outsourced via an agent as via a letting agent it will come back but the system at the moment and it's it's clunky but the system is that there is a there is a maintenance email address for the agent which for our properties will essentially just get forward forwarded straight to my company stroke team uh, so that is that is the system and then what what this person then does is triage it and says actually we'll just get the agent to, team to do it because they're on site or they can do it really quickly. Or we know because, because again, as part of the documentation of the systems, what we did a little while ago, probably a year ago, and the prices have changed, but we, we got a list of all prices for things that we would pay with our direct team. So whether that's a gas safety certificate, whether that's fixing a door handle, whether it's resealing a shower tray, you can tell I'm in at the coal phase here. Um, all of those things have been costed and so if, if, a, if the maintenance team come back and say, this, this repair is going to cost £300, when I know I've got a team that will do it for 60 all in, well, we know where that's going to go. And that already is starting to, to bring costs down. But the second thing it's making us do is that we are actually going out to other maintenance companies now that do this as a whole and looking to see where we can, I mean, essentially bulk buy, you're, you're getting people on retainer to be able to do this type of stuff. And that for me, you know, even just saying stuff like that aloud means that we're operating more as a business. We're not just somebody that's, uh, and this is not to be detrimental to anyone, but this is just talk, we're talking about property as a business. We are now stepping away from the property and operating as a business. We're not just thinking about, oh, I've got property X, Y, and Z. How do I manage them? It's like, okay, how do we run this as a, as a business? Which is, you know, we are the business of property after all. Indeed. So... I have some questions around how the agents are, are taking to this, but one in particular is around sort of the the, the agents' processes, really. I suppose, and and also your your business processes. So, a typical maintenance inquiry might be raised to the agent, and if the agent was handling it, then they would talk to a, a, a I don't know a plumber or whoever it is that's needed, and they would arrange the the visit to the property perhaps liaising with the tenants, perhaps getting the the plumber to liaise directly with the tenants, although probably not in an HMO because it's, it may need contact to multiple tenants. But now if you're adding the extra step of coming out to your business and, and your, your assistant, your employee, and they are then sort of liaising with the plumber, how is that process of going back to the tenants to, to let them know that someone's going to be coming into the house to, to fix things and what have you? Is it yeah, is, is that currently sort of a bit clunky? How are the how are the agents taking to it, or, or have you managed to, to streamline that in some way? It, I mean, it's definitely clunky, but it's very simple. I mean, we're talking about an email, so you know, an email goes from a maintenance team to my team. My team research, choose someone, email back the maintenance team, and they confirm it with the uh, with the tenant, and. In my experience, you know, even this week, that process can take less than an hour. So tenant emails maintenance team, they forward it to us, we get it. 
because I'm now because it's not me. If it were just me, and this is the point, I would look at that email and go, oh, "Gosh, something else to deal with." I'll come back to that in an hour. That hour will turn into a day. Then I'll phone, you know, my building team. He'll say, "Let me come back to you. I'll have a look." And then two days has elapsed. Whereas now, because I've got someone specifically on it, what they will do is they'll receive that email, really harangue and harass the build team. And if it's urgent, if they can't get anything in it within an hour, we kind of just say, okay, just go back to agents, maintenance team, just say, we're happy for you to deal with this. Um, so obviously, the we, we're doing this primarily because we want to reduce costs. But in business, we know that if we're keeping our customers, i.e. tenants happy, then that's going to help us in the long run. And, and actually, it's doing both because it now means that we're just being much more responsive and getting to things quicker. There's, there's going to be a lot more issues on the way, as anyone in property will will know. But finally, we're on the we're on the right track of building the right system with the right processes to 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 let's say first and foremost make sure that the tenants are happy and getting things dealt with because that that was the bit that used to really irk me as well was when I knew that we'd have a you know leaky sink for far too long and you know the tenants get on with it as you do we've all been in that situation but so yeah so we're 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 at the start but it's it's getting there yep yep i think it's probably a good place to end isn't it there's you're 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 streamlining you're working on saving money and you're delivering a better service to your tenants yes and finally if if you're thinking about growing or scaling your business your property business and you want to know where you're at just click on that link and you'll get instant uh, instant feedback and then some useful links at the bottom uh, about this podcast, uh, about getting free tools from Patma and, uh, yeah, any other advice that you might need. So please do click on that link. And if you've enjoyed this show, please do leave us a rating or at least a thumbs up. That would be very much appreciated. Until the next episode.